just to give this a bit of context, um, we obviously want our content to resonate. And if we're talking about the dark arts of SEO, uh, we want to you know, push dig digital PR and eventually get links. Um, again, just to provide a bit more context, I've been at Melt for three months. I was in-house travel before I came over and I've worked various in-house travel companies. And what used to really annoy me is how separate the PR team are from the SEO team, the rest of the digital team. Um, of course, traditional PR and digital PR are, are both needed, but the old PR team that I used to work with, they used to sit behind a bank of newspapers. They used to come at the weekend and be like, this is our holy grail. We don't really care about what you're doing in SEO as long as we get a mention in the Sunday Times and it's about 100 pages in and I'd imagine about five or six people read it, probably more, um, and not to offend anyone from the Sunday Times. Um, so, <laughs> first thing to speak about, um, today's news cycle is... It's really fast. It's, we could say a 24-hour news cycle, maybe not even that. What's news in the morning isn't news in the afternoon. Um, and just so a few quotes on there. I think the, the most pertinent one there is that less than half of people that go through to an article, uh, they can't actually name the news brand themselves. Um, so really it shows in terms of what people are publishing, it's more the story than the actual publisher. Um, and I think from the Guardian there, in terms of we've never seen a new cycle like this, in terms of how much content they have to produce and how they have to engage their audience. So this is from Bud Zumo um, and a talk that they did at Brighton SEO. Um, so they did uh, a review of a million pieces of content. The average number of backlinks on that was zero. Uh, so content and attaining links from your content is getting really, really difficult. A lot of content gets zero links. Um, the number of social shares was actually four. So to, uh, off the back of Desiree's piece, hopefully you'll get higher than that. But uh, you know, that's a low number. And what they're actually saying is social sharing is decreasing and private sharing is increasing. And what they mean by private sharing would be through WhatsApp, through email, et cetera, et cetera. There's also a lot of saturation. Um, everyone remembers Bitcoin. Apparently 40,000 different articles of the million that they produced or looked at were about Bitcoin alone in December 2017. So that just shows how much of a crowded market there is. And then obviously it was a travel industry. We're all talking really about the same destinations and most of the time the same products. So more content equals more opportunity and at the same time more risk. So with that, planned work can be risky. Building content around an event or a specific time, it takes a lot of planning and a lot of resource. Because we know that events upcoming is likely to be higher competition, and how do we create a unique angle on that? Disposable content, straight away, let's take an event like Blue Monday. It's one day a year, I think it's January the 15th, and working in travel for four or five years, that's been a massive event for everyone. Oh, you know, it's the saddest day of the year, let's talk about Blue Monday. We go out and talk about it on January the 16th is immediately out of date. It's a made up day, you know, it, everyone's targeted it. So why should we keep going after that? We need to produce evergreen content, which is updated consistently. And that what, that's what drives the most in, uh, links and engagement. The post office, they've taken a really boring topic about the costs of going abroad. And they've made that an annual uh, piece of content which provides utility not only to the publishers but to people that want that content and they just provide what the average cost of a basket is in each country and then come out every year and say Bulgaria is the cheapest place to go it has suntan lotion for three pounds it doesn't sound that interesting but in terms of engagement and links everyone picks that up so one thing that we're trying to do in the office and you know is really really hard we're not going to say it's an easy sell is being pro proactive at being reactive so let's take the royal couple for example how can we go and provide a travel view or commentary on those known events we know it's going to be relevant for national press um, all travel press or destination specific press what can we do we can provide demand insight we can provide price comparison or we can provide an expert view what we're also talking about is how we close that journey. So instead of just going out and saying, oh, do you know what happened at the Royal Wedding? You know, we saw an increase of this. We need to get that link. We need to publish that story on our blog. We need to share that through social media. So there's an, uh, uh, a source of that information for publishers to link to. So 
how do we do this? A couple of events that we could look at. Caradice Island, so I always say this wrong. Cara Delavine rented out an entire island for her 25th birthday. There's no reason why we couldn't go out and say, this is how much that would cost. Everyone published it. We can provide our unique angle on it. Uh, rather than the toy or running moon, maybe the royal honeymoon. Um, <laughs> Uh, I believe that someone predicted come out and said this is where they're going. I don't know if they've officially, uh, officially announced that, but that was massive news. Anything with a TV program that has a destination featured in it causes a peak in demand. Um, and looking at analytics, you can see that straight away the next day. So one of our clients, Sunville, we had a look and uh, I think one of the unique destinations they feature in Italy was featured on location, 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 on one of those buy, buy a house abroad or something like that. Straight away, there was a massive peak in demand for that. Um, you know, Gennaro goes to Italy, all of those types of programs, that's the type of thing we should look at. And lastly, the big one, Love Island 2018, we can't wait for it. It was massive last year and it got covered by everyone. Um, it was actually, where is Love Island, was one of the most Googled questions in 2017. <laughs> Um, and Cosmopolitan actually picked up a, a very boring article or a report that a search uh, company put together to say these are the most Googled questions about Love Island. So there's loads of things that we can spin at and you should definitely look at being proactive. Be proactive at being reactive. Uh, the last piece that we wanted to show to you on that was um, Black Panther was a film that Marvel pushed out. They have a fictional area in there called Wakanda. I haven't seen it. But Hotels.com went into their analytics and saw that they have an area in, I believe, in Pennsylvania in the US, and it's called Wakanda. They actually saw a 600% increase of people searching for hotels in Wakanda and put that out as a press release, and that got over 100 links. So that's the type of uh, real-life example where a little bit of work like that by the SEO nerds or whoever looks at your analytics, and they can pull that out and push that to your PR team. And that will get a lot more coverage than the one link that you'll get about the price of a hotel in the Sunday Times uh, Sunday section. So, how do we put this into practice? Effective media watching for all levels. So, over the course of an eight hour day, uh, the average employee works for about three hours. At Melt, it's about three and a half. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> People spend time on reading the news, browsing social media and socialising about non-work topics. So how can we make the best of that additional five hours? We need to do the basics. <laughs> so everyone's seen this meme and I think it got shared a few years ago in terms of people that are on trains, look at them looking at their <coughs> mobiles. Obviously everyone didn't read newspapers back in the day as you can see. But it's about making use of that time. So industry news, emails, newsletters, Google Alerts. So Google Alerts is a big win. Um, you can go and set that up, it will tell you when your brand's mentioned, uh, when competitors are mentioned. Um, so one of our brands is London City Airport um, and we see whenever there's uh, something going on in terms of the weather, we'll get loads of Google alerts and London City Airport faces these delays, etc, etc. And then we'll see that in our analytics to say more people are looking at London City Airport. Follow hashtags, so stuff like TweetDeck, I know someone mentioned that earlier on. Push notifications, uh, so me and Indy sit opposite each other and I remember when Arsene Wenger got uh, sacked or released from Arsenal, we both got the Guardian alert, looked up at each other and said, oh my god, Arsenal's, Arsene Wenger's left Arsenal. So that's the type of thing which promotes conversation in the office. Commuting time and Friday afternoon time, use it appropriately. Uh, Media Watch as a team, so we're big avid users of Slack uh, and since uh, I've been there we've had a reactive news channel, so we plot anything in there that we think will be relevant. Um, and we have a history um, of stories that we can go back to all of the time. It's not the massive paper, uh, Sunday Times, all of that stuff in one area listed in the back of the office somewhere. That's something that we can go and search and find instantly. I think the big thing with this is it promotes conversation. Sometimes people don't want to talk, uh, but they're happy to talk in Slack and provide some feedback on that. A big one is analysing your targets. So understand what your target public publications are publishing and when, what are their limitations? So are they mobile friendly? Do they host images? You know, can they host video? That type of stuff. What do they publish? So is it image galleries, top tens, long form journalism? I think a big one um, and something that's been covered a lot is just looking at journal requests. I know we've got journalists in the room, etc. 
but that's where you can pick up link opportunities or an opportunity to comment on things pretty easily. Uh, again, going back to my SEO roots and looking at that, there, there's Google commands. So you can use Google more effectively. So one of these is uh, site. So if you just put site in the folder that you want to look at and then look in title and we put 10, that's given us 38 results of the mirror and top 10 lists. So I can see straight away that the mirror loves to publish top 10 lists and I can see when their most recent top 10 lists were. Just search Google commands, it will come up and you know, uh, you'll be able to use Google a lot more effectively. You can use the last 28 days, the last week, the last six months, you can look within the URL, all types of stuff. Uh, Google News Search, so going in there, easy, that's going to pick up everything that's instantaneous as well. So, on to the title, I know we've gone through a lot there. <laughs> what are the, the travel media publishing? Let's have a look at the Mirror. So the Mirror has 863 separate travel articles. This is accurate of last week. Uh, what does it publish? So it, it's consumable travel news. It's not in depth, you know, uh, you know, 4,000 piece uh, articles. It's, you know, I can go on there on my lunch break and consume it pretty easily. Uh, travel deals, photo galleries, lists, and data stories. They're published cycles. They publish around 20 to 25 articles a week. So really that's 20 to 25 opportunities to be featured in the mirror. How does that work out specifically? So. Data-led stories, this is something we're seeing increasing um, within our space and something that's really working. So the cheapest week for a holiday in Orlando is revealed and it's during the summer holidays. So someone's gone to the mirror and said, oh, by the way, here's our booking data. Do you know this is the cheapest time to go? They've created a story out of that. And that's currently 8% of their stories or 8% of the, the travel articles they've got on there. 22% of their articles are lists. So if I want some content published there, or I'm looking to uh, you know, speak the, the journalist language at the Mirror, I'm going to go to them and say, oh, you have X amount of uh, you know, lists. Here's a new one for you. They don't have to do any work. You know, they can literally upload it as it is. And then lastly, 10% of the articles cover the launch of uh, a product or a sale. So anything flight related they love. So 24-hour flash, flash sale, that type of thing. Mirror is perfect for that. Cosmo, or I call it Cosmopolitan, Sarah said I need to call it Cosmo. Uh, 207 separate travel articles. Uh, they're slightly different, obviously. You know, um, you know, it's women's focus, it's lifestyle focus. They have lists, images, social media, products, and trending stories. Theirs is far, far less, it's three to five articles a week. So if I really want to resonate with them and whoever's publishing the content there, I need to make sure that I've got enough insight you know, and I'm equipped with enough information, so as when I go there, it's something that's going to resonate with them. Just looking at the last 20 articles, three out of the last 20 are on inflatable shaped things for your swimming pool. <laughs> so if you have inflatables and you're looking to sell them, go to Cosmo, they'll lap it up. Um, <laughs> Four out of the 20 are list-led data stories. So again, they're combining that data story and they want it in a list. So if I've got data, I need to go and put it to them in a top five, easy, consumable story for them. And a lot of the stuff evolves around Instagram. They can just take the picture. So if I go to them and say, all right, well, here's 10 influencers, here's 10 pictures, here's 10 pieces of data for you, that's going to make their life a lot easier. And then lastly, Two articles next to each other, and three out of the last 20, are on companies paying influencers to go somewhere. So, oh, advertise this dream job, you can go and travel around the world for six months, and guess what, X company is going to pay that. What that would tell me is that whilst they love that, it's probably getting a bit diluted. And if anyone comes to us, we should probably say, look, that's not something we want to do, it's an over-utilised you know, story. Lastly, on to the evening standard. So, 763 travel articles. They're very different to both the Mirror and to Cosmopolitan. They're big on travel guides, hotel reviews, guest columnists, and essential travel news. So what I would say by essential travel news, it might be, here's flight delays because of, you know, there's something going on, you know, at an event, that type of thing. And their published cycle is 15 to 20 articles a week. 40% of their content is travel guides, and a lot of that is guest writers. So in terms of us going to them and looking to provide a travel guide or looking to provide links, it needs to be really informed. We can't just go to them as a brand and say, 
this is our story. They, they probably want more. They want an independent person. So they would be primed for, OK, look, uh, we have this journalist that's going on this trip. You know, let's publish a travel guide. They don't want to hear from the brand necessarily. 30% of their content is lists. When I say this, it's a lot more uh, specialist lists. So uh, for example, on the mirror, it's very generic, very general. This is usually a list of a travel guide. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, just 1% of their co content is launch, sell, or deal related. So that tells me, do I really want to waste my time in terms of going there? And then secondly, if I do, it has to be something that's you know, quite positive um, and a first. So for example, the story there is Norwegian launching 150 pound flights to uh, Singapore. So that's looking at the publishers. What I wanted to do was just provide a view in terms of content and link building and what's winning at the moment. And what we're seeing a lot of is data plus the story. So hopefully that resonates with everything that we've said today in terms of you shouldn't just tell a data, a data because 5% of people forget it, but 63% of people will remember the story. So uh, this is cheapair.com. They're an American company. As you can see, their content looks like someone's built it on, I don't know, Excel 2003. I'm not <laughs> sure. It's not the most amazing looking content, but the story that they've got behind this is providing a utility on when you should book flights. So I think it said that you, know, you should look to book 63 days in advance of your flight because that's the best time to book it. So that's really useful to me. It's a lot more useful than here's the top 10 things to do in Los Angeles or you know, inflatable dogs, that type of thing. So this is where we need to really look at us providing data and insight as brands uh, and then turn that into a story and a utility for the end consumer and for uh, publishers to push on. So lastly, next steps for everyone. Uh, watch the media, record what wins, record what loses. Uh, push that as a team. It is something that, you know, uh, water cooler chat, as they say. Uh, get all the possible staff involved. Just because we're an SEO team doesn't mean that our editorial team shouldn't be helping up with our reactive news channel. Be proactive, be reactive. And then lastly, I think the big thing, once you've got this, is not just saying we've got data, all right, here's top 10 things to do. You need to pitch effectively. So the right content needs to go to the right publication. Go beyond mail merge and personalize. Um, I think journalists have all got stories of where they will receive an infographic, which is probably 20 megabytes big. They can't get it on their mobile um, and they can't open it because it's not mobile friendly. So, you know, that's a big thing. There's no point in gathering all of that insight. And then when you're going to pitch, you know, your sales pitch is redundant. That's everything. Thank you. Thank you.